another A-level computer science video with me, Mr. Goff, for mrgoff.com. This video will focus on problem solving and abstraction. Problems can be specific. For example, how many paving stones are needed for this 3 meter by 4 meter patio? Or more general, for instance, how many paving stones are needed for a X meter by Y meter patio? There are several methods that can be used for solving problems. Two that you need to be familiar with are an exhaustive search, which involves trying every possible solution to a problem. A linear search for data is an example of an exhaustive search. The second is a divide and conquer strategy. This attempts to split the problem into smaller subproblems, solve those subproblems using recursion usually, and combine the subproblems to get the final solution of the whole problem. An example of this can be seen in the binary search. Abstraction is a core part of computational thinking, alongside decomposition and algorithmic thinking. Abstraction is very helpful in developing a good understanding of the problem that needs to be solved. We spoke a little of abstraction at GCSE, but at A-level, Let's take a deeper look at what abstraction actually means. Representational abstraction involves removing unnecessary detail from a problem. One of the most common examples of this is the tube map for London. In the tube map, you can clearly see the station names because things have been moved apart so that the names don't bump into each other. It's also easy to see which line stations are on and where lines connect with each other. This makes it very useful for a passenger traversing the tube. However, some of the detail not included in the tube map that's been abstracted away includes that distances on the map do not represent real life distances, lines do not follow the actual paths of the track, and above ground details are largely ignored. There are many other differences as well. Abstraction by generalization or categorization is a grouping by common characteristics to arrive at a hierarchical relationship of the is a kind of type. In developing an algorithm for loading passenger ferries, we may consider the transport of vehicles. A truck would be a type of vehicle, as would be a car. These could be further broken down. For example, a hatchback is a type of car. This is very common in the object-oriented programming paradigm. Procedural abstraction represents a computational method that will be applied each time the procedure is called. The result of abstracting away the actual values used in any particular computation is a computational pattern or computational method, also known as a procedure. All that needs to be known in order to use a procedure is the interface, that is, what values need to be passed to it, as what data type, and in what order. So to use the draw circle procedure seen here, Programmers only need to know that the first value they pass should be the X position, the second one the Y position, and the third one the radius, and then they'll be able to draw a circle of any size at any position. With functional abstraction, the computation method is hidden. This means to get a function requires another abstraction beyond procedural abstraction, which disregards the particular computation method. What this means is that if I call something such as random.randint, it doesn't matter to me how it generates a random number, I just have to know that it will generate a random number and it will be between the two values that I pass the function. Data abstraction refers to the creation of abstract data types based on primitive data types by combining them or by defining methods that they can work with, or both. Examples of abstract data types include stacks and queues, which might be implemented using arrays and pointers and rules for the stack or queue size. For the programmer using an abstract data type, they need only know what operations can be performed on that data type, things such as enqueue or dequeue, 
and not how it's actually been implemented. Problem abstraction is where details are removed until the problem is represented in a way that it is possible to solve because the problem reduces to one that has already been solved. If you consider a maze, the solution can be obtained by representing the maze as a graph with each decision point in the maze becoming a node and the paths between them the edges. Compositional abstraction can either refer to bringing together a series of procedures to complete more complex tasks. For instance, you might bring together the procedures to draw a few triangles and a square in order to draw a Christmas tree. You can also refer to building data abstractions by combining data objects to form compound data. For example, this binary tree data structure can be represented as a list of lists. That brings us to the end of this video on abstraction. Join me again soon when I'll be taking a look at automation. Use the resources at mrgoff.com to help you revise computer science. And until next time, it's bye for now.